Hello, everyone. This is Xin. In this demonstration, I want to introduce how to use mechanics of structure genome to carry out beam-like structure modeling. A graphic user interface named GMesh for SC is developed based on GMesh, which is connected with finite element server Calculix CCX and a general purpose composite software SwiftCom. SwiftCom is developed by Professor Wen Binyu at Purdue University. SwiftCom uh, uses mechanics of a structure genome to carry out multi scale constitutive modeling of composites. Now let's see how to access this software. This software is available uh, in the cloud through CDM Hub. So let's just type CDM Hub. Go to this website. Uh, here, let me just log out. You can apply a free account by signing up. And let me log in my account. And uh, in this resources, click tools. The second box, there is a shift com. And click launch tool. Then the software is ready to use. And also we can reset this window to fit your uh, working env environment. Okay. And also, if you collect this learn more in the supporting documents, you will find a lot of useful manual or information to help you learn how to use this software. Okay, let's see our problem. This is a cantilever beam. One end is fixed, and another end applied a com combined loading. A point force acting uh, uh, along the axis and uh, movement uh, in the y uh, acting in the y direction. And there are eight layers with symmetric layup, and there are only two fiber angle, zero degree and. 90 degree. The laminar constants are given here. Now let's analyze this structure. First, let me introduce the framework, uh, modeling framework using MSG. The first step is to identify SG based on the original structure. In this problem, the structure is very simple and the SG is just uh, the cross section of this B. And how to identify SG? You can find the information in the supporting documents. And the second step is to carry out the SG homogenization analysis to get the constitutive relation of structure elements. In our example, the structure elements is the beam, beam elements. Now let's first do the homogenization. Let's input the material property here. Let's build a new file. Name it as 8 layer B. Click OK. <clears throat> and then go to material, thermal elastic, also traffic, and the input uh, the material properties here. Here we use the units MPA. Because we use MPA, uh, so the units for the force is Newton, and the length, the, the geometry size, use the uh, units millimeter. 
Okay, let me double check. Okay, it seems right. Click Add. Then it tells you Material 1 has been added. Then Exit. Go to the Geometry, Common SG, 2D SG, Beam Sections. Gmesh for SC uh, developed a lot of common SGs for user to quickly build the geometry of the SG, so it is very convenient. In the rectangular, click Composites, click Layout Define. Let's use the first generator generation here. We select material one as we just defined and by our layout symmetric so at the S here and uh, each ply is uh, five millimeter the thickness of each ply is five millimeter as you can see from here it's eight layers and it's 14 millimeter Click it, close it, and the width is 180. Like this. Now you can see the geometry has been created. Now let's go to uh, mesh. First, we click control, mesh control. Here we can control the mesh algorithm and the mesh size. Here, uh, I don't want to use the triangular mesh, so I select this op option. And then I want to get a fine mesh to capture the stress distribution. Then click Generate. As you can see, I can generate a very structured mesh. And in order to improve the accuracy, I click Set Order 2 to get the quadratic elements. Then I can go to Homogenization, click Beam Model. Keep all the parameters uh, default, click Save. And then it will tell us uh, It will tell you this this input file has uh, is ready, and then click run. Now the effective stiffness matrix is calculated by stiffcom. So we finished the second step SG homogenization analysis and get the constitutive relation for our beam elements. Next, we will use this constitutive relation to do the microscopic structure analysis. Let's just build a new model for the microscopic structure. The beam problem, this microscopic structure is really simple because it's just a straight, straight line. The first, uh, at the first point, and then the second. Remember, we use the units. Our units is millimeter, so it's 1,000 millimeter. Then, then choose straight line. Select the first line and the uh, first, so first point and the second point, and then click Q. Then this is our microscopic uh, structure. And then. Go to Assign Structural Properties, Select B. It lets you to select a part. Let's select this and click E and then click Q. Then this window will automatically pop out and let you to choose the constitutive relation uh, you just uh, get from the homogenization, which is stored in this .k file. Click OK. And then we can go to mesh. For here, we don't need to this fine mesh. So I just 
uh, input this as one. This is a uh, sufficiency to get uh, accurate results. And then generate the one D mesh. As you can see, the, the nodes, uh, there are a lot of nodes. And then I can go to uh, public write int file. And then import our structure properties. It will tell you that as this material is written in this file. And then define step. Public CCX server has the same input format as Abax input file. So it is very popular and convenient. Currently, uh, users need to input the boundary condition and the loading condition manually. But for the beam problem, actually this step is also very simple. Let me just uh, define. This is the boundary condition. And let me define the uh, loading condition. Static loading and this is concentrate force. And at point two. Ten kilo newton and uh, and the y direction, so it's And step. Okay. This is our boundary condition, and this is our loading condition. Save it and close it. And then click in the complex module, click run. And after it's finished, it will tell you your job finished. And then you can click this results to see the macroscopic the global structure responses as displacement, rotation, uh, string, uh, string field, and stress resultants. And then later, we will use this information to carry out the dehomogenization as shown in this picture. We now we have get the structure global responses as to the SJ dehomogenization analysis to get the local point-wise displacements, stresses, strings, of the original structure. Now let's open the SG file we just created. It layer B dot G. Here we will use the global structure responses as input parameter to carry out dehomogenization analysis. Choose the CFITCOM, dehomogenization, and beam model. We can get these parameters from the result uh, calculated by the calculus, as we just see, just so. And then here, we can input this. We can input this. This is obtained from the uh, results, results file calculate by CCX. So it's easier to find in your folder. Let me just input this parameter into the dehomogenization analysis. Let me just input it from my script. finished input this parameter just simply click save 
and wrong. Then the dehomogenization results is shown here. As we can see from this post-processing module, we have the displacement and uh, uh, string and stress. And in order to demonstrate the accuracy of our results, a 3D FEA model has been built in the AVEX. As we can see, uh, we first compare the global responses displacement in the U1 direction and U3 direction. And they are in a good agreement. You can even, even you, you cannot say the because the lines are overlapped, so you can even you even cannot see this blue line. And this is the stress coming from the dehomogenization analysis. Also, the results are in a good agreement. This is sigma one one, sigma two two, and also sigma three three from the uh, cross section of the middle of this B. In terms of the efficiency, we can compare that for the 3D FEA, we used uh, more than five hours with 16 CPUs. But for the model using MSG, we just need one less than one minute with just uh, one CPU to finish the calculation. Thank you. I hope you have learned some uh, useful information from this video. See you next time.